Last week I programmed a simple multiplayer game using my engine. It had basic motion, health bars, and explosions. Okay, so how did I do this? Well, after making the basics of the game, such as movement, I used a library called Enet. This allowed me to send and receive UDB packets and synchronize the different players. But it's not as simple as just sending and receiving data every frame, the speed of light just isn't quite fast enough. So, we have to optimize what info is sent and when to send it. Usually it's sent in one packet, such as player ID, the type of the packet, and the variables that go with that type. I used spaces to separate the different values. In init, this is done by first creating a string of our data, and then creating a variable called init packet. Uh, this variable will be a pointer, and it's going to be equal to the method init packet create that takes in as its first parameter the C string of our message, and then the length of that message, and then a flag. I use init packet flag reliable because I want to be assured that the data is received. This isn't TCP, it still is UDP, but it is still pretty reliable. Then after, we uh, use the method init-peer-send to send our packet to the peer. The first parameter is the peer, the second one I don't know, so I put in zero, and the last one is the packet that we just created. But when should we send this packet? There are many good approaches to this. Often it depends on the game and its style. Me, my players are a part of my person class that contains a state such as idle, walking right, or dead. The person class self-updates depending on the state. If the state is walking right, in the update method, person will update its position towards the right. I send the state to the server that sends it to everybody else when the state changes. I do this by comparing the last state to the current state. If it's different, we send a new state. And so then, the player will automatically synchronize. Alongside the player's ID and state, I also send a position and momentum. I do this just to make sure if we missed a few packets, that the player is still at the right place. It also aids for when the player ragdolls away, I will have the momentum. At the end, the packet looks something like this. Player ID, 2, player state, XYZ, and velocity, XYZ. Z being the height. So in init, the message would be something like this. I'm pretty sure you can see what's going on. For the explosions and the coins, I use a slightly different system. For the coins, I send the fact that I want to spawn a coin to the server, and the server responds by telling everybody to spawn a coin. This is not ideal, as if all the players weren't connected before I spawned a coin, when they do arrive, there will be no coins for them. What I should have done is run some sort of coin manager on the server, or simply have a client to track the state of the world. It's the same deal for picking up the coins. The player tells the server and it confirms the action and warns everybody else. It's the same process for explosions, but the only thing you can do is tell the server you wish to spawn one. The explosion has a timer that self-deletes itself once done. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video has been of some help to you in understanding networking. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll be sure to reply. New videos from me every Monday, and if you want even more, you can check out the funtage I made over on my channel. Me and my friends had a blast testing out the multiplayer code. I'll see you then.